Hi, I'm Mac McCarthy, and I help people with their breakups, and we're going live again. This will be the last one for a long time in the crafts room of my mother um, here in Northern California, and we have a good topic today, spinning plates, a plate theory, some questions about this. So this will be based on, thanks, cheers for the like, whoever that was. Uh, this is going to be based from Rollo Tomasi, which I didn't write down. Uh, Rolo Tomasi, Stephanie, Stephen Daniels, welcome. I don't know if I've uh, had you on the live stream before, Stephen. Um, welcome. Should have wrote this down. So Rolo Tomasi's written The Rational Mail. I recommend this book often for a lot of guys coming out of breakups. Um, it's a non-politically correct. It's a little bit obnoxious at times, but I think that this guy definitely writes something that's not been written by a lot of other people out there. So, but getting to one of his chapters or his theories, and the guy's this guy's smart. Let's just make it simple, right? He studied these things. He's I think I believe he's a professor of psychology in Reno, um, and he's got he's got a large background and a large group of people that follow what he does. But let's just get to this whole thing of spinning plates, Mr. Stephen Daniels, who's on deck, and the three other people who are on board, and plate theory. So if you don't know what spinning plates is, basically, my interpretation is if you're out there and you're dating, so this could be at post-breakup or even before you're in a breakup or you're just single, um, he recommends that you have split plates spinning, which I've said again and again and again. Um, plates meaning that you have... People that, well, if you're a man, women that you're flirting with um, or potential partners that you're flirting with or putting in work, as I would say when I was younger. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have uh, intimate or you're sleeping with that individual, but you're kind of flirting someone from work, someone from your university, um, someone from you know, a trade school you're going to, pe people that you see regularly at your cafe, if you go to the same cafe or coffee shop, if you go to the same gym and you come into each other's orbit and to others' energy a lot and you and you you have conversations, right? Sanja Kojic, welcome to the live stream. I haven't seen uh, this name before, so welcome. Uh, if you have any comments on some of the questions I've posted, go ahead and free, feel free. If you have some questions to post, I'll get to them in a second. Um, so basically with spinning plates is instead of just concentrating on finding the one, the soulmate, uh, what's suggested with this is to have a, have five or six different women in the case of the book that you're talking to, that you're working on, that you're flirting with, that you're seeing regularly. And like, again, like I said, this doesn't mean you need to be all in dating, um, but you, but you're in contact with them. So Let's say if you meet someone, it's not like, oh, my God, I've met this wonderful woman today. Oh, my God. And you're putting all your eggs in one basket and you're so excited and you're, you're trembling. Instead, if you have a few different plates spinning, you're like, oh, yeah, I met this really cool chick today. And I might go on a date with her. And then you get a text from Karen who works at the cafe who sometimes you go to the beach with. And then you have someone else. Then you have someone else. And it puts you in a really good position to be indifferent, to be stoic, to not feel like, you're so anxious or um, excited about the prospect of one individual because you're spinning multiple plates. So it's, it's not that special to you. And it doesn't mean that out of those four five, six plates that you're spinning, that one or two aren't extra special or that you like more than the others. But the fact that you have that interest or mutual interest spinning around on these different things going going for you at one time really builds some momentum some confidence and puts you in a position where you're not desperate right and i think that's where people lie in their breakup is when they're concentrating on getting back with their ex and they're obsessed the mouse wheels running a lot of times what they're doing is that they're they're sitting there and they're going okay i just want they're they're fixating on one option and putting that time and energy while being rejected and not getting any kind of energy back sinks you if that makes sense so the idea of even the idea of plate theory is that if you have four or five six seven plates going i i, I use the number four or five because I, I don't know if you can get 
eight or nine of those going sincerely. And in my interpretation, it doesn't necessarily have to be someone that you have a hot and heavy relationship. could be someone that you work with, that you go out to lunch with once or twice a week. You've hung out a couple times. It's kind of light and fun. Um, you guys really get along well. And dare I say you're friends with possibility of benefits. If, if you went out on a Friday night with another group, you guys could possibly hook up. There's some sparks that you've been exchanging. And that's a plate. That's a spinning plate. So next question, how many legitimate dating options do you have? Instead of calling it spinning plates, you could just ask this question. In your, in your realm right now, in your sphere, whether you're with someone or not with someone, or whether you're broken up or you're just single, how many legitimate dating options do you have? Like if you looked at your, you know, your friends, your work colleagues, people that you know, and I'm not talking about cold approaches and randoms, I'm talking about people you know, and you're like, you know what, if I was single or if I was looking, this particular person is someone that I'd like to go on a date with, and I think that we have a pretty good connection and would work out fairly well to, to okay, you know, how many of those options do you have? And that would be considered a plate. How many potential partners have you been flirting with? Okay. So, um, flirting can be different interpretations for different people, but basically joking, having good conversation, making each other smile, being charming, being complimentary, making each other feel good, um, would be flirting. And how um, how many of those do you do you have in your in your realm right now or your orbit? And I'm like, like I said before, to characterize this and to punch this home, it could just be someone that you you see at your local breakfast restaurant two times a week. That's a waitress that you flirt with at each time you see her, and you go, you know, in the back of your head, you're like, I can probably go on a date with her. I could probably push this to another level. That's like a like a slowly moving plate that you can increase. But that interaction that you have with her and that positivity that you guys give each other, that gives you a little bit more confidence when you meet someone else and you meet someone else and you meet someone else. And then I'll take it a step further. If you go to that restaurant and you're dating someone and then you run into her, you put yourself in a position where you've created your, your social value, right? Because this girl's like, wow, he's got a nice looking date. Okay. You see where I'm going with this? Do you agree with spinning plates? So do you agree with the idea that you, sh you, you should or you should consider having multiple people that you're dating at one time? And to, to clarify this from Rolo Mossi's book, The Rational Male, he talks about men specifically. He talks about men specifically before the age of 30 all the way up into their early 30s using this as a technique regularly. Um, is this method only effective for men? So this is really interesting. Uh, I believe that when women meet men, they like to they like the I like to think that the man is desired by other women. It's highly attractive, so it obviously works if you're spinning plates. Women might not want to admit that wholly, um, but if a guy has three or four different women calling him here and there, it adds some value to him. Or some woman, if they're out at dinner and some woman comes up to him and says hello, it adds some value. Does the same thing apply to women? It's a good question to ask. I don't know. I mean. It definitely means that the woman has a good personality, is outgoing, and she's attractive um, if she's drawing attention like that. But there seems to be a double standard in a lot of cultures. So good question to ask yourself. Are women more attracted to men who seem to have more options? I think that's absolutely true. So that, that would back up this plate theory thing. How much of plate theory is based on momentum, practice, and confidence building? I think most of it is. So I would say that, you know, if you're looking to build momentum, which builds confidence, if you're at a place where you're at ground zero, where you don't feel very, very good about yourself, you're not going to go zero to 100, as Drake would say. You're going to go, you, you need to build some momentum and start the tire moving. And once the tire moves, it builds momentum, it moves faster and faster and starts going in the direction, right? And with, with plate there, you always keep momentum, right? And you always keep your practice up because even though you're not maybe – playing in the game that you want to be playing in uh, you know at the level that you want to be at by practicing by practicing charm by practicing flirting you put yourself in a position that when you do meet that person that you really like that it's not going to be um like your first time stepping on stage right and it definitely builds confidence to have strong interactions that are positive on both ends with the opposite sex that you're interested in so let me get into this little jamesy cavanaugh 
<clears throat> Thanks for always commenting and, and throw, shedding some light on the situation, James. I really appreciate it. If my girl was keeping her options open like that, I would break up with her immediately. Having plan B makes it so much easier to give up on plan A. Okay. Uh, I think what I'm – I get your point. I would say that – thanks for the like, whoever that was. I, I would say that I'm looking at this more in the theory of someone being single, uh, and that could be single out of a breakup or it could just be single. So I'm saying if you met a woman and you started dating her and she was seeing other people or let's just say that you could – she didn't say she was seeing other people, but you ran into some guy at the mall that obviously her – that guy are pretty good friends. They seem flirtatious. I mean, at that point, does that just kill it for you? Where let's say the same thing happened to you. You're dating someone new. You run into someone at the mall and you guys have this little spark in between you. That's kind of light and fleeting. What would, um, what would that do to the, would the woman be more attracted to you? Probably. Every dude knows there are other girls he can get with, but there's a fine line between keeping your options open and emotionally cheating and not meeting. Okay, so I'm not suggesting that you cheat or emotionally cheat, whatever that means to you, emotionally cheating. Um, I'm saying that when you're single, right, and you start seeing women, seeing someone, I mean, is dating. It means you're not official. I'm saying, is it okay for you to see multiples? Women want to know you are sexually successful, but they don't want to feel like you feel like your backup option, which is what Rolo is suggesting. Um, I, I, that's something to be debated based on the individual situation, right? Um, and the individual. I see what you mean by that. I see what you mean by that. And um, there's a fine line. There's a nuance to it, right? There's a nuance to it. There's a big difference in spinning plates while single and doing it while you're in a long term. Absolutely. So if I conveyed that in the wrong way, absolutely. I agree with you. Um, I, I would say that if you're to spin plates while you're in a long term relationship, I'm just saying it's OK to use charm and maybe some light flirting when you're around other women to just keep yourself sharp, to not be like so much like this all the time. But that doesn't mean to go out and cheat. So, thanks for your take on that, Jamesy. Um, correct, Mac. Rolo also states that you do not have. Uh, sorry, my remote's there. Or my remote, my uh, microphone. Rolo also states that you do not have to have sex with plates. Just keep your social muscles in check. That's a great way to put it. Thanks for uh, chiming in on that, Mayo. That's, that's my point, and I like that idea because. Um, <laughs> that's how I've practiced things in the past. I didn't know I was, you know, maybe doing Rolo's technique or if he wants to take credit for plate theory, because he put it into a theory and he put it into a book and, and cheers to that. Um, but I absolutely agree to keep yourself sharp or to keep the sword sharp. Um, that yeah, like you, you should be going out there when you're at your best to keep up practice, right? Even, you know, when I was a kid, I used to play basketball, right? I mean, I played every day for, I don't know, from the year from eight to 13 almost every day and when i stopped playing for a long period of time you lose some of your you know you lose some of your skill right absolutely it's just, it's just how it is so i'm even saying that i would take it a step further that when you're in a monogamous long-term relationship i'd also say that it's completely fine to do a little bit of flirting there's a line there's a line but when you're single, absolutely, you should be spinning plates and they don't necessarily have to be sexual plates. No, we are on the same page, Mac. I agree with what you're saying for sure. Okay. This is like, and if we don't, it's fine. I respect your opinion, man. Uh, this is like an ancient knowledge. The, the beach boys always say stuff like, take my best girl out on a Saturday night. I used to look at it like getting experience points in a video game. Talking to girls and making advances gets you points, so you level up. Okay, good way to put it, James. Practicing my bank shots right now. Right on, Mayo. Little Tim Duncan. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's just an interesting topic, and it came up. It's come up a couple times. and I, Right now, we don't have any females on, but I, I, it's interesting to hear their take because sometimes we have you know a group on here. Um, but I didn't know this particular theory, as I said, 
And I, I, I think it's hard to just slide into this getting out of a breakup. You got to lick your wounds and you got to do your healing and things like that. But once you do start dating, what's amazing to me though, what I've noticed in my own life, when you really get back into dating or being single or on the search and, and everything comes in groups, does that make sense? It's like all of a sudden you're like, Oh, you know, like, Maybe for a few months you were kind of down and out, whether that was money, whether that was a breakup, whether that was not feeling good about yourself, whether you were sick for a month because you had some illness, whatever it may be, and you start dating again and you start, you know, you're like, oh shit, I, you know, I really met this cool girl. And then you meet another one within the same week. Is that by accident or is that just the energy you're putting out there? Because I know in my particular situations, it usually comes in groups and bunches. It's not like I just met one. It's like at the time that I've met a girlfriend in the past, I've been spinning like four or five plates. Let's see. James, they took yours down. Ties into the concept of social proof. Yes. Yes, it does tie into that. It, it's, it overlaps. I agree. If chicks see you are popular with other women, it tells – them your dick works and that you're not crazy well yeah that's to put it bluntly that's to put it bluntly or poetically um i'm looking to start dating soon four months no contact i'm rusty yes yeah well i mean if that's what it took for you to kind of because you've shared a lot about what happened with yours mayo and it's not like you went on that instant rebound like the night after and you kind of regretted that you had some other issues from it you got back together so you kind of went from ground zero into ground zero again so you kind of like ping pong balled in between you haven't had really a full recovery four months is a nice length of time i forgot how long you were actually together mail but that's a nice little round amount of time and talking about a topic like this might spark you to and this is the thing it's like you don't just go out and all of a sudden it happens. It's just, it's not like forgetting Sarah Marshall where, where the guy goes to Hawaii and meets the hot receptionist that just likes him and is available and she's single. Like think about the variables in that movie, forgetting Sarah Marshall, right? This guy breaks up, he goes to Hawaii, the hot secretary or receptionist not only likes him, but is single because usually really good looking women um that that have some good personality they usually already have a boyfriend i mean that's the other part of it right so i mean the idea of when you do meet someone that you like mayo being in a position where you're like oh she's really cool and being light about it not being anxious about it and then when you do go out with her and then you're like oh shit i met someone else it's kind of cool it kind of just opens things up ain't it the truth mac ain't it when it rains it does i'm just saying i mean I don't know if anyone else agrees with me. I remember, I remember, um, this is way back. It just sparked in my head. I was 19 or 20, long time ago. Um, and there was a girl I really liked and we kind of went out on a couple date or friend things. Um, didn't hook up cause I was, I was too shy or scared at the moment. I'm not, I'm not shy to talk, but I was shy to make a move, this or that. And I wasn't sure if she liked me and this and that, but we weren't together or nothing, but I had an interest in her. She was hot. I was attracted to her. And then I started working at the mall. I met another girl and that's, that's where proximity counts where you're at. When I started working at a mall, Oh my God. And I had to wear a suit to work and stuff. I mean, I started just running into chicks, right, that you worked with and you looked your best. So I can get into proximity later on in the demographic thing, which I talk about. Um, but within those few months, I'd, I'd started seeing this girl and then eventually was my girlfriend, but we were seeing each other. Like we were dating seriously and seeing each other. And that girl called me up. I remember I was, <laughs> I was in bed. Uh, with the other girl watching a movie and that other girl which which i don't ever remember her calling me out of the blue she was just like hey what's up it's almost like she got word like hey you're valuable now you know what i mean she knew the other girl too they had you know they weren't best friends she called me out of the blue i'm like wow that was like my first situation where i'm like wow and then of course the girl i was with is like oh let me talk to her i haven't talked to her in a long time that was stupid of me right so i stopped spinning that plate i guess but when it rains it pours the word gets out the word gets out when I'm dry, there's not a woman around. When things turn around, it's like I can't make a mistake with women back and forth. LOL. It's true. That's why I'm saying what his theory uh, is saying. And I never read about him. 38. Now I've read about his book two or three years ago and I reread it or re-listened to it on audio recently. And um, that's the reason I think 
is because when you're in that mode and you're actually seeing someone or dating someone and then something else comes up and you start seeing someone else, it's momentum. And then you don't even think about it because um, it's, it's just like, you know, it's easy for rich people to make money. Why? Because they don't worry about losing as much. Correct me if I'm wrong, right? If someone has ten million dollars and they and there are one million dollars, you're know, like, all right, well, you can do this safe investment, you can do this risky one, and if you're unless you're really fucking stupid, you're gonna lose money. And they're able to they're able to make more money based on the fact that they already have money. So when you have that gusto flowing, when you have that you know that that air about you when you're walking around and you don't even know why all of a sudden you just kind of like perk up, it's like they notice that. Definitely some truth about keeping that momentum up, keeping your ego pumped up from all validation just draws more people to you. Yeah, and it's not just women, too. Propinquity, that's the word. I don't know that word. Thanks for educating. means having closer emotional ties for people that you are in close proximity to all the time. Yeah, like I said, when I had that job at the mall at this high-end, um, very high-end department store, um, totally changed things. I, had, I when I was 16, I'd worked at some sporting goods stores and different jobs, you know, while you're in school and stuff. And then I worked at that store and I had to wear a suit and it was really nice. And I had to sell upscale items. I was on commission, totally changed everything, totally changed everything. Turning in while doing some work, hit the like button, people right on Hooper. Hope you're researching what you want to do. <clears throat> So, yeah, that propinquity, propinquity, I'll have to fucking remember that word. But, um, yeah, where you where you live and what you're doing is going to affect, you know, who you meet and what kind of what kind of women you meet. It's like I've had I've had a good friend um, that works at how should I say this? Because I don't want to say exactly what it like public works. It's a it's a labor based job. Um, it's a good job, actually because it's uh, city-based and whatnot, and to see how their relationships transpire and whatnot. I mean, there's no way for them to really meet women while they're at work, usually in work boots, you know, dirty jeans, things like that. Not saying that women don't find that attractive or find a guy attractive with a steady job, but you're not going to meet nearly as many women as you would if you were working, you know, at a restaurant that was really nice. Right. You're just in the proximity of more women coming in and out. You probably look better. You're helping them. You have to conversate with them. I'm not saying for everyone to go out and get a job at a restaurant, but you know what I mean? It changes the dynamics of things. And that's why when someone's saying I'm having trouble meeting people or getting on the move, you need to change your environment. You need to change the people you're hanging out with. And I wouldn't just say friends because uh, it's hard to just if you have a friend for five years or 10 years and you guys have been friends for that long, it's hard to just go, oh, yeah, I don't want to fucking hang out with you anymore because emotionally and mentally you know you're like oh let me call up so-and-so and get a beer but if he's got a girlfriend he's been locked in with 10 years and you just became single psh, he's probably not going to be the best road dog when you guys go out and you got you're looking to meet chicks and stuff because he's locked in for 10 years he's going to either be bitching or um, talking about how great it is that he's in a long-term relationship and trying to maybe live vicariously through you but not really being a part of the game does that make sense what do you think about dating chicks at work, Mag? Not the best climate for it these days, but still. Interesting question, James, especially when you said not the best climate for it these days. So there was – I'll answer that in two parts. Short answer, I would say it wouldn't be a problem unless you already think it's a problem. If from the get-go you're uncomfortable with it, then it's probably not a good idea. If from the get-go you're like, yeah, you know, we're in different departments, you can reason and logic it. To a point where you're like, we're in different departments. We've got to know each other over lunch before we even dated. Because I know that's happened to me before um, when I was young. You know, some of these jobs, you work with a lot of different people and you end up going on lunches with them. And then you build something before you even have to ask them on a date. Does that make sense? Um, but like a cold approach at work, that might be where the climate these days is gray. But there was a guy that I did a live coaching session, really, really cool dude. He's an engineer in his mid thirties, had his own house, said he's said he has a great life, loves his job, which is like a complete plus in life. Absolutely loves his job, 
really fucking easygoing, cool dude. Had a past girlfriend that was like a doctor. And so I won't get into his breakup story, but he, he started meeting women online and he was meeting women online at a pretty good rate. And he had done this before. And so I, and, but they had turned into long distance relationships. Like their one was three hours away. And the, the one before that was four hours. So I said, Hey man, why don't you just try to consider, I know you like these online dating things, but maybe try to meet some people in your city or maybe even try at work since you really like your job. Is there anyone at work? And he goes, dude, he goes, I would never touch anyone at work with the climate of things in this, in America right now and getting accused of saying or doing something wrong. And that was the first time I've heard someone say that. And this is a pretty sound individual. Um, and he was saying it more like getting accused of, you know, uh, what do you, what do you call that? Sexual harassment or one of those things. So I think, I think for me, it depends on the circumstances, James. I think that if you've already developed something with that woman, whether it's work, whether it's you guys going on a couple lunches together that were casual, um, you know, cause at work you can be casual. You don't have to be like, Hey, let's go on a date. It could be like, Hey, do you want to grab lunch? And then you can see how the connection goes from there. But you kind of know if you like each other, right? You kind of know if you like each other. The only other part of that is if you start dating and it goes wrong, you got to see each other every day and work with each other. And I've come across people that do that. I've had, let me think about my own situation. I think my, yeah, <laughs> go, it's funny. Cause I never talk about this, but the, I always talk about the breakup that I had that was really bad or or traumatic for me at the time. Um, but my first relationship when I worked at that, when I was like 18, 19, 20 ish in that range, I worked, worked at that department store I'm talking about now. And the other, the girl that I was seeing and eventually was my girlfriend one day just goes, Oh yeah, I got a job here too. I was like, what the fuck? I was like pissed. Cause she worked in the mall, but she didn't work in my store. And it was annoying sometimes. I, I mean, coming down and always wanting to get lunch. I, I'm kind of an independent person. Oh, I'm an independent person. I like my space. And so I found it annoying. Um, she really liked it. Uh, and then when we kind of broke up, did it create big problems? No, because we weren't in the same department, but it was awkward at times. And I eventually, you know, looking back, I changed jobs and moved to San Diego maybe a month and a half or two months after we broke up. And it probably subconsciously was contributed to the fact uh, partially to having to work with her afterwards and that breakup wasn't bad for me it wasn't like i was you know i was well moved on uh, easily out of it sorry that's a long fucking answer james I had some good coffee this morning not like mad men where you could bang your secretary in the desk ah oh, the old days that's a great fucking show i i got to mad men late but i mean what great writing incredible um never dip the pen in company ink. i did it and it's not fun at all I mean, I'd, I'd say more times than not, it's a bad decision. Um, probably depending on where you work and what you do, if you really get to know that person prior to asking them out or dating, that would probably be more ideal than just taking a shot at someone that you just were attracted to that you work with. Um, but I remember <laughs> this the, that department store that I worked at that had this big department. So you worked with 20 or 30 different people. I mean, there was a girl that worked there that I think she was in her thirties and she was, she was good looking. She just started and stuff. And one of my buddies, it was like 21 or something, just started college. And she had a boyfriend that she used to bring, um, or a husband, I think that she used to, you know, he'd meet, he'd meet her for lunch and stuff. And this guy I knew that was like 21 drove her home from work. And he was like, dude, you know, so-and-so he's like, yeah, I, fucking hooked up with her. I was like, what really? She had no, she had no qualms about it. You know, and he said she initiated it. She was, I was, I was like, good for you, man. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, damn, you bring your husband to have lunch here where you mess around. Some people are, some, some people got guts, man. That's fucked up. I, you know, like introducing, introducing your husband or your partner to someone that you just, someone that you just cheated with and then just having them be a part of that. That's deep. That's deep. Don't shit where you eat. Yeah, that's a classic, Sabina, SB. Thanks for that. Don't shit where you eat. It, it, with all the options out there, it isn't ideal. It isn't ideal. But there should be probably special exceptions. And considering the situation and the nuance to the situation, I wouldn't completely eliminate it. Like, I just don't – I'll never do it. 
I wouldn't say that because, um, like I said, looking back at my relationships, I've always met them in places where I frequented. You know, I've met a girlfriend at a gym. I've met one um, when I was doing a training at a university where she worked at the university and I eventually would work there, but we were in different departments. Um, and I've also, again, uh, had someone that I went to school. I mean, think about it. Think about this. Like when you're in school uh, all the way up to university, that's a big one. A lot of people send me messages when they break up because there's a lot of breakups in university. I have to walk by her or I have to see her in my class. Man, am I going to have to start talk, taking yoga classes if I want to meet chicks? I swear. It's a good play. I mean, I haven't been, I've done yoga and I only did it for three months hardcore. It was tough. But what's nice is it's a lot of like minded, kind individuals. No one's in there with an attitude. It's a good work. It's actually what I liked about it more than anything else because a lot of times people are trying to lose weight, especially with hot yoga. I've never, well, yeah, I don't really have that problem. So for me, I like the mind part of it. it really relaxed my mind. But saying all that, you meet, you, you put yourself in that demographic, demographic and that group, and you get to date one of those chicks more likely than if you just cold approached one of them at Seven Eleven, right? And that demographics then models by Mark Manson. He has a whole chapter on it. And he said it's the most highly overlooked thing when when people are dating. Um, so I, I would I would highly agree with that. I mean, there was one guy I saw on YouTube one time that said he used to I forgot what he said. He said he went to hospital cafes or something like that because he liked doctors and nurses. And he said he'd always he'd always get dates that way. Um it sounds like, oh yeah, what whatever this and that. I'm like, well, actually, dude, if if you're in that situation, Buenos dias, coach. Alejandro, buenos dias to you too. Bien y tú? My Spanish was bad. I actually in high school I got actually kicked out of Spanish class. I was talking too much, believe it or not. <clears throat> and not in Spanish. So, does anyone have any questions? Do we want to talk about this plate theory, Alejandro? Do you have any opinions on plate theory or questions? How legitimate dating options do you how many legitimate dating options do you have? How many potential partners have you been flirting with? Do you agree with spinning plates? Is this method only effective for men? Are women more attracted to men who seem to have more options? How much of plate theory is based on momentum, practice, and confidence? So if you guys have anything to, to weigh in on that. I'm going to go another 15 minutes to about 13 minutes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to peak this at 45 minutes. This has been a smaller session. I mean, yesterday I came on, there were 17 or 18 people right off the deck, man. But this is always good. James is always on deck. Um, <clears throat> that's an interesting question, though. It's Whenever someone gives you a question that's general, like, should you date women at work? It's very general to say like, no, never. Like there can be exceptions to every rule. There can be a nuance to every rule. You don't want to eliminate things based on one experience or one herd of experience. Women are for sure more attracted to guys who have options. I agree 100% 502. Hooper 502. I agree. Uh, that, that That's one of those ones. It's like, I, I don't even know if that's debatable. Most things are debatable. I'm not sure that's debatable. Um, the only women that wouldn't be attracted to a guy like that is one that wouldn't feel like she was worthy and she wouldn't want um, uh, to deal with that. Having problems setting dates on dating apps since I'm so busy during the week. Well, anyone else have any suggestions on that? Because I, I don't... Um, where there's a will, there's a way, Mayo, is what I would say. I mean, get creative, right? Is there a way to have a later date? Um, you know, what's the I here's what I would say, uh, Mayo. Think to yourself, instead of instead of trying to coordinate it with the woman that's on the dating app, oh, you know, I only have these times available. Go instead of it, reframe it into something like, all right, if the ideal time, let's say the ideal time for you is nine PM because of your work schedule. 
tell you know instead of saying like i only can meet at 9 p.m go you know what let's get dinner at 9 p.m because that's when the moon comes out i don't know make it a positive of the time and, and figure out what the ideal time frame is for you and then present the ideal time frame in a way that it's a little bit more attractive or exciting than just leaving it open because one thing we both know male women women and especially like these dating apps i think they like you to lead more or less so if you come up with the ideal time or day for you and it doesn't work for them go look that's the best day for me could you do it the week after i think dudes got to get over the initial hump of rejection after a breakup your confidence is all jacked up and it takes a minute to get it back on point before you can start spinning plates yeah i'd agree to that i i definitely would say that uh you know talking about this i wouldn't say like someone just getting out could just go into spinning plates right away but i'm saying that once you get started spin another one spin another one and like we said when it rains it pours right i flirted with many women during doing part-time ride chair but i'm not ready to get to date yet well that was my point i mean if you're flirting and and uh, you're at least practicing a little bit of flirting that's good you know, if you're just completely closed off, it's going to be harder to jump back in, right? Um, if you don't use it, you lose it. Well, honestly, that goes both ways. Preach. Dating apps are a dumpster fire for me. Women are able to pick the most top tier, top 10, 10 out of 10 chads. Lucky if they even respond to leading Tinder was the best call I ever made. Well, good for you, James. I mean, that's your experience. And if you don't like it and you have a negative outlook on it, fuck it. Don't do it. There was a client of mine. Um, I don't know the app. I've mentioned this before. And he had he had money. I don't know how much money, but he was he was well off. And he had went to an expensive one. He asked me about it. Um, and he's like, what do you think? I think it was like three or four grand. Like they do it. They basically interview you and stuff like that. And he met three three top tier women right off the bat. And one of them he's still with, he's been with her for like a year or two years or something. No, it wouldn't be a two years. He's still in the honeymoon phase, right? It's probably like eight or nine months. He said it's going really well. And he had to make a decision between two of them. So he, he put his, he, instead of settling for that, and I'm not saying everyone has the money to spend three or four grand. And I don't I don't remember what it is. I'll have to send him an email and ask. And he said it worked out. He said it was better. I mean, you get what you pay for. So, but I get huge ego boost being validated from women. I know it fades, but it helps me forget. about. Oh, absolutely. Even if you get a small compliment on your appearance, I mean, if you're really down in the dumps, even if someone gives you a, and a compliment about your appearance, it feels good for a second, but you kind of like, yeah, I know I don't want, but I mean, putting yourself in those situations and going and getting yourself in a position where you're always looking your best, being yourself, but looking your best. To put yourself in a situation where you do get those compliments coach if you could see some of these women's profiles they will literally link to their venmo profile so you can give them cash for doing nothing it's instantly it's insanity i know all women but still i don't know because i'm not on there so you're you're educating me on that from your standpoint i'm I, i'm not surprised and not to go back into everything's about that rational mail book, but I thought that was a hilarious chapter where he talks about dating apps and he talks about the woman that puts up an, uh, an ad for another man. And then he puts up the ad that's ideal for him. If you, I'm sorry if the people didn't read that book, so they don't know what I'm talking about, but that was, that was fucking outstanding. That's one of the best chapters in the book. Um, well, then, you know, what I would say, like I said, look if there's any other dating apps out there that are a little bit more exclusive um, that maybe line you up with people rather than just randoms, you know. And even the Alejandra app, an app like Tinder, it's all based on physical attraction, nothing to build a relationship on. I mean, isn't there some out there, though, that are different? I don't know. I haven't researched it. I suppose some people are like, well, you should know about this. I don't. I'm just lucky to be in a situation like where I live. There's a lots of healthy women who give great point of view from their point of view. Yeah, you're in Boston, right? So you're, I mean, that's probably the advantage of living in a big city um, is having more options, right? A fat blue haired woman with three kids and no job will be on Tinder asking for a six one man with a six pack. <laughs> oh, so you're saying that's the ideal guy, right? A six, uh, six one man with a hundred K a year job. Jesus. 
That's funny. Well, I mean, it's it's like he says in the Rational Mail, Rolo Tomasi goes, if, you, if you're if you spending your Friday nights pounding a six-pack of beer, you know, and a, a large pizza, something like that, and you think you're going to get a supermodel, who the fuck do you think you are? It's like there's a lot of guys out there like that. Um, shit, I've had – I think I've had a couple clients that, um, you know, a, appearance-wise, they didn't feel like they were at their best because of their weight. And they knew it and some of their habits and in their eating and stuff like that. And they're like, well, the, I'm like, so how's it going? Have you met anyone or this or that? It's like, yeah, I just started kind of like playing with the gym. Like I go here sometimes I do this. You know, I saw I, this girl was really nice to me in class. I think she kind of was sweet on me because, but she wasn't really hot. I'm like, I'm not telling you to lower your standards, but you, you got to know what ballpark you're playing in, dude. He's like the other one that sat behind me. Now she was hot. Now I'm not going to discourage anyone, but you you know who you, whose arena you're you're in and who's not, right? But that's the thing. Men are so thirsty that they validate even ugly women. These women use all sorts of filters on their pictures, and men tell them they're beautiful. Ooh, the filter thing's huge. That's one thing I noticed. Like being away from the states and then coming back for a visit, the amount of fucking makeup and foundation. Oh my god. There is a lot of that, dude. There is a lot of that. And the fake eyelashes, I'm like, what? This is like obnoxious looking. I mean, um, and that's not a generalization of all, but I guess some do. I, that has to do with regions too, James. I mean, I, I do strongly believe that there's a uh, a difference from city to town, from city to town, from country to country about – the ideals and different things. And that's why, like, if you really don't like it, I always say to consider moving because there's a different, there's a different level of what's going on. And there might be a city out there that really suits who you are and what you are and what you like to do. So they feel like they deserve Brad Pitt. Well, that's a movie thing, right? That's that Hollywood thing that you've seen someone normal or uh, unattractive, maybe pull someone else. But I was gonna I, I was gonna talk about this in, in my book and, and make a point of it. I'm not gonna elaborate too much. Brad Pitt ain't a big deal. Okay, Sabina. Um but I remember there was a guy that I used to work with and he used to get really good looking women. He I mean he was a player, I guess you'd call it. I mean, he wasn't he wasn't a jerk or anything like that, because people think of, of quote unquote player or something like that, like he's a jerk. No, he just Women were attracted to him. He had the pheromones, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. Um, and he ended up making this girl his girlfriend. Because, again, this was I worked for this department store for years when I was in college. And I let Brad, hit, Brad Pitt hit it. You mean your girlfriend? Um, so, this, like I said, this guy, like, he, he had been – like he had hooked up with numerous girls at the store that were really good looking. And like I said, a lot of the women liked him and everything. And he ended up with a girl, a woman, um, that wasn't very attractive, uh, to, to the regular eye at all. Uh, she was homely, if you will. And he was quite happy. I mean, she had a pretty good body, I guess. And he just liked the way she treated him and made him first. And he, I think he was an alcoholics anonymous and he couldn't drive a car. So she drove him everywhere. So there's other way. I mean, she, you know, she was all in with him and, and you kind of like, this is the girl you end up with. And when I seen you dating these other chicks or like going out with these other chicks. Um, but that, that, that just goes to show you sometimes who someone ends up with can, can really surprise you. It can happen. But when that does happen, when you're like, wow, this is a mix match couple where someone looks, seems to look a lot better than the other person. There's something that someone's appreciating about that other person that has nothing to do with their physical looks. And that happens, it happens more times than we think. Should you always respond to an ex? Uh, short answer, no. Uh, first, ask yourself what's your intentions in responding to them. Second, ask yourself what do you want from the outcome. And if it's to get back with them immediately or to win them over, I would say no. So I hope that helps you in saying. What's up, Daniel? DC? How are you doing, Daniel? Excellent. Outstanding. I'm actually leaving tomorrow on that 17-hour flight. Cheers on the like. So I got that to look forward to in the, the Warriors finals the night before. Hadassah Meteoros. I wonder how to go about establishing contact with someone you always see at the university library. 
being a girl, early 20s. Um, I mean, how do you feel about being a girl in her early 20s by initiating the contact or showing him that you're interested in him? Does that make you feel like um, that you're crossing some line? Have you had, I mean, is this just a, a Hadassah, is this just a total stranger? Or is this someone that you've actually like made eye contact when you've crossed or you've been friends? I'm excited for you, Mayo. Like, I'm not going to get into it here, but yeah, they, I'm excited for you too. It's not so bad, James. It's not so bad. I've, I've learned to deal with it, but the, the, what do they call that? The, um, you know, the day after and stuff like that. The, um, it's, cause, cause this is a different topic than I'm on. This is what this happens in live stream. You got to switch to a different, um, what do you call that when you jet lag? What the fuck? The jet lag is longer on 17 hours, but I mean, with flights now and the movies and everything like that, I, and you have a layover when you have a flight that long, I actually like having a layover. Uh, I see a lot of coaches say that even if you don't want them back, you should respond and tell them not to contact anymore. It seems like mature and nice thing to do. Well, bottom line is I'm not a lot of coaches, <laughs> but here's what, here's my, here's my, um, 10 cents, if you will. If you send me your full fucking story, um, I can give you a tailored response. If you want to have general information, the, the answer I just gave you was highly general. If you want to like, if you want me to really dig in, then let's do a live coaching for an hour or two hours and I'll really get deep with you and give you like a full, full idea. But this is what happens with general questions and what general questions are welcome. Uh, but you're not really going to, when you say like, oh, all these coaches, a lot of a lot of other coaches out there, from what I see, do a lot of general generalizations. Well, if this happens, then do this. It's fucking bullshit. What happened in a relationship? I need to ask you questions and know exactly what happened, where you're at, who you are. That's why, like a live coaching, when we get into who you are, what you're about, then we can really get to the bottom of what you want, rather than um, making the right move. Does that make sense? So, I mean, if you haven't sent your story, send your story in and then ask questions from there. But for me just to say like, oh, you shouldn't, um, like I said, eye contact happens sometimes, but stranger. Eye contact's good. I mean, are you giving him, do, do you, um, so obviously this is just based on physical attraction, right, Hadassah? So this is just based on physical attraction. Um Eye contact is first and foremost. Uh, have you said hello to him to initiate that you kind of like him? Is there a way that you can talk to him? Nice. I just got done with my class lecture. It was kind of a rough day because I woke up thinking about my ex. That has not happened in a long time. I think it's because I was dreaming about her. I can never remember my dreams, but do remember seeing her in my dream. Oh, you know what? When people break up, they tend to remember them more often. And, and if you want to remember your dreams, you just go to bed and say, I want to remember them tomorrow. You tell your subconscious. Take a train or ship to your destination. No need to fly. Well, in my case, I couldn't do that. Well, that would be way too far. Happens to me too, Daniel. It's just your brain throwing up toxins that is your ex. Good way to put it, Jamesy. Mayo, I'm going a camping trip alone Friday. I'll put my story together then in a bullet form. A lot of stuff happened in 35 years. Do it. I'd love to hear your story, Mayo. Send it in to me, bud. Raps in six. I just love. I, I just love how everyone's on the bandwagon with um, suddenly. I, I like Leonard and I like what he does, and everyone's the greatest player in the world now. And let's keep in mind if he didn't hit that front rim shot that like went five feet up in the air, man, it's a game of inches. Woo. Raps. I, I've I've said since the beginning that Raps are special team. They got a good team, but I'll tell you this: cream always rises. And being in four finals in a row, don't underestimate uh, Clay, Steph, and and Draymond Green is highly, highly underestimated as as far as how good and how good he's been the last four years, let alone these playoffs. I'm gonna I'm gonna drop the mic on that, Mayo. Um. Daniel, you're from North Carolina, and you're voting for the Raps. Okay, cheers. Uh, Hadassah, oh, I hope that helps you. I mean, it's not really my thing to do just random cold approaches. Maybe get, you know, if you're talking, you're in your early 20s, 
I don't know if you saw this question, Daniel. Maybe you'll shed light because Daniel's a university student in his early 20s. Um, okay, it's an East Coast, West Coast thing. Now we're getting Snoop Dogg and, and Dre involved too. You don't got no love for the West Coast. Um, Dre, Dre's underrated, dude. I don't want to get into it. I, I'll just start a whole nother uh, live stream for, for basketball. I've thought about it before. Um, Daniel, though, this girl up here, Adasa, this might be a question you might want to shed some light. I wonder how to go about establishing contact with someone you always see at the university library. He's a stranger. She's a girl that's in her early 20s. You got any light on that, Daniel? What's up, Ozzy? <clears throat> Maybe you want to shed some light on that for Hadassah. This has been good, guys. This has been good. Like I said, I'm going to have a regular time starting June 1st, make a commitment to do 30 to 40 minutes each day. I enjoy doing this, and uh, it's been going really well. But it would be nice if you guys knew a question. Quick question. Is it too early to drop a ro the Rolo knowledge on a soccer team of 15 years old? Well, he wrote that book, The Preventive Medicine. Is that what it's called? The green one? He wrote it for, I think he wrote it for high school students and people in their 20s. So, I, I mean, I don't know, Mayo. I, I, I don't know at that age how, how much their parents would, would like if they're 15 years old because that's kind of a gray area. And what exactly are you going to drop on them? If it was your own son or someone you're close to, like I have a nephew, then fuck yeah. I mean, you can have those chats. Yeah. I would tread lightly would be my short answer, you know, because someone's parents or relatives, when you give them information like that, people are fucking weird about that stuff. If it's your relative or someone you're close to, then you have a right. It's like my, my nephew's like my son. I'll say what I want. If a cute girl wants to approach a dude, she has to, she has to know there's pretty much no chance of getting rejected. Guys, don't reject cute chicks. So there you go, Adasa. This is this is uh, James's opinion. Um, unless he has a girlfriend, I know it's I know like like as a as a woman, you know, in her early twenties, and he's a stranger. Um, probably not just going for a cold approach, but starting a conversation with him um, with something to go on about the library, putting yourself in closer proximity to him, Adasa might help to, you know, regaining more and more eye contact. If he's got a girlfriend, not scumbag, he will reject her. Okay. Look, look, kids watch your wallet because these women will screw you over in a divorce court. Have you had that happen, James? Um, Okay, thanks. Perhaps approach on what he's studying on. Okay, or what he, book he's reading or give your interest in what you would like to read, you like to read, or what you're studying on. So Adasa, this is Daniel Callie Mayer. And so he's a young student. That's his take. Maybe, maybe just make small talk with eye contact. Strong eye contact conveys to any other human being, whether they consciously know it or unconsciously know it, that you like them. So that's like attraction one-on-one. -on -one. And if they, they hold the contact or they smile, they probably have some attraction towards you. Okay, Hadassah. Let us know how it works out. Where are you from, Hadassah? It's an interesting name. Hadassah Mediros. Maybe I'm saying it wrong. Or where, or where are you at right now? Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to get someone else's opinion. Um, and, and you know what I'd say to all this, Adasa? You have nothing to lose, hon. You got nothing to lose. Like you, There is no wrong answer here, right? If, if By you laying on the sidelines and doing nothing, you'll have more regret where if you get rejected, you just got clarity. Oh, cool. Okay. Brazil, huh? That's a place I want to go. Shit. That's on my top five list. Damn. The name is Hebrew and Aram Aramaic. Okay. Oh, here goes Daniel. Daniel's Hebrew? 
I know David is. <laughs> That's funny. This is a good session today. Thanks, Daniel. Thanks, Adasa. Thanks, Sabina. Thanks, Mayo. Thanks for getting involved here, even if you are a Raptors fan. It's like one of those years, though, I cannot hate because you guys, man, you guys are due. You guys are due. And it's funny because I actually have someone that helps me out in coaching and, and doing my uh, YouTube and different things. And he has a big channel and he's from Toronto and he didn't even know they were in the finals and he lives there. He lives right up the state street from the uh, stadium. All thanks to Mr. Leonard and the Sif Rim. <laughs> even if he has a girlfriend, but he is a player. He won't reject you. Yeah. I mean, he might he might spin a plate, right? So I mean, don't overthink it, Hadasso. Like this might get into an overthinking thing. If you like him, you know, get into his orbit. You know, and start a small conversation, make eye contact, see if he likes you a little bit more. And some guys, you know, honestly, I don't I don't think there's a big problem if you want to ask a guy out for a coffee or something. I don't think you need to go right into it. But if you can see he likes you, I've been asked out before. And I've welcomed it. Sometimes guys are shy and they don't see the signs. I don't see any problem. That's like you're throwing yourself at someone, especially when you meet them at the library. You want to get coffee sometimes? I've seen that science book you're looking at. I've studied that before. I don't know. All right, folks. I got about five minutes left. Do we have any closing questions? This has been good. All fun. All my, I might have to do a weekly NBA show and bring Daniel and Hooper over and Mayo. We have a nice little start there. And I have a I have a good friend that's a huge uh, Oklahoma City fan, Westbrook fan, and now he's all of a sudden on the Leonard bandwagon. Well, that's my second favorite player. <clears throat> Any closing questions for me today, folks? No problem, Sabina. At Sab, I don't know what that means. Yay at Sabo. Max, so I went to the beach this weekend. I saw some hot. Girls, I wanted to approach, but for some reason I felt intimidated. Maybe it's because I'm still afraid of rejection. Aren't you the one that told me you put on like 34 pounds of muscle? What the fuck? But I, I mean, come back to where's your power and what are you scared of and what's the worst thing that can happen? You know, I mean, if you're in that good of shape, you feel as good as you are right now. Cold approaches, I think, in 2019, people are more shy about them because we do so much text messaging and passive friendships where you're talking online through Facebook or these Snapchat things. Um, you know what I mean? So I would, you know, w what's holding you back, right? You just gave someone advice that you should probably take when you go up to those girls. You were probably solo. If you were solo, cause I think you told me you were solo. So that like not being in a group of friends when you're younger like that, that's, that presents a little bit more of an issue. Okay. Well, put yourself in situations where you're not directly asking. Put yourself in situations where it just comes up. I've just started this documentary on Milton Erickson. You might like this, uh, Daniel. He was, he was one of the best uh, hypnotists of all time, and he's a therapist and all this stuff. Look it up. I think it's on Amazon. And... um. He talks about he went down the Mississippi River solo and he basically had no money. He had like three dollars and he got all the way down and he didn't ask anyone for nothing. He just made suggestions to people and let them offer things to him. Really interesting. I haven't finished it yet. I'll have to talk about it. But I would say if, if you're that worried about it, but if you're able to go over and, and mingle or talk to them or make some small talk. But I will say when I was young in my early 20s, to be fucking absolutely honest, I was shy with a cold approach for sure. I lived, When I lived in San Diego, yeah, sometimes. I mean, I, I mean, I dated and did things, but I mean, like just seeing a group of hot chicks on the beach just to do a cold approach, I'd be intimidated sometimes too. Um, and if that's the case, 
then change your demographic, change your dynamic. But at the other end of that, like if you did get rejected, who the fuck cares, right? Because you didn't, you didn't really have anything to lose. And you got 34 pounds of, of new muscle on? Come on, man. Oh, Monica, you came a little late. But yeah, the topic was plate theory. I wasn't like this before the relationship and even in the early stages of the relationship. But that means you're capable of going back, right? Um, sorry, Monica, I'm just rounding this, this one out. So it's been an hour right now, but I probably won't be on deck tomorrow until another two or three days. And then, like I said, June 1st, I'm going to start doing every day at the same time. And I'll report that to you all. It's helping you gain yourself. You fucking already got a lot of confidence, Daniel. You're going to be okay, dude. What are you, 21 years old? You're in university. You're going to be a programmer. You're a gym rat. Come on, man. You're moving to Bay Area. You got shit going on. Don't worry about it. You're just fine. You're just where you want to be. And you know what? This relationship and this breakup happened at the right time because it, it's going to serve you in all your other relationships and all this knowledge you're building from these live chats and maybe watching my videos or watching some other ones. And I know you, Daniel, you read like some really cool books. You have uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza, some of these other ones. You're, you're getting educated on some shit that's only going to serve you later on. And this breakup that you had, Daniel, was probably going to happen anyways. Just saying it had nothing to do with you. It was timing and circumstances. Early 20s breakups are timing and circumstances 90% of the time. It's not usually personal. You ain't, you aren't going to, the person you're with at 19, 20, 21, 22, you're probably not going to be with them for the rest of your life. Just think about that. Fuck yeah, you should appreciate it. Okay, man, because it's fucking truth. It's truth serum. Swallow that down. You're not going to stay with the person. Even if even if everything went rose petals and wine glasses for the next four or five years, you might be 25, 26, rolling in money, got a great job, and all of a sudden you're going, wow, this is the only chick I've really gotten serious with. You know what I mean? You would have you would have gotten an itch too. All right. So I'm going to close it out, folks. Thanks for showing up. Um, it was a good one. We out here, folks. Another one on the books. Thanks, Mac. Thanks, James. Thanks for contributing, bud. When I get this thing right, and I'm getting it right right now. I'm going to actually, uh, someone like you, James, if you're interested, we'll do like a live interview or something like that because you got a lot of knowledge to kick, my friend. I really appreciate what you bring to the table on these live streams, as, as with the other regulars too. So, cheers. James could be a coach.